my name is Daniela Elena Costea and today I'll present to you the oral manifestations of Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a condition characterized by chronic inflammation of gastrointestinal tract. It can affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract from mouth to anus. That's why as a dental practitioner is your duty to know and recognize the oral manifestations of this disease. The patients with Crohn's disease usually present the symptoms chronic diarrhea, chronic abdominal pain, chronic fever, and in time they start losing weight and they present with fatigue. The diagnosis is quite complex and it might take a long time from the first symptoms till the patient is fully diagnosed. That's why as a smart oral practitioner, if you can recognize some early manifestations of Crohn's disease, you can save a lot of the suffering of the patient. As part of the diagnosis, it's taking a biopsy from the affected area. And when the biopsy comes to our department, the Department of Pathology, we need to see some lesions in order to set the diagnosis of Crohn's disease. These lesions, the pathognomonic lesions for Crohn's disease, are the presence of granulomas. These are structures in which the chronic inflammation is organized and it contains mainly macrophages that look like epithelial cells, so we call them epithelioid cells. The macrophages can melt together in a huge giant cell with quite characteristic distribution of the nuclei towards the periphery like a horseshoe. We call these cells Langhans giant cells. So, in the granulomas, we have the Langhans giant cells, we have the epithelioid cells, and we have lymphocytes scattered around. For the oral practitioner, it's very important to know that the oral manifestations of Crohn's disease can even precede the intestinal manifestations of the disease. So the dental and oral practitioner, they can be some of the first ones to put a diagnosis of Crohn's disease. This is very important, particularly for pediatric dentists, because children present quite often with oral manifestations, and many of those precede any of the intestinal manifestations. Let's look at some cases. This is a boy of seven years old. He presents to the dentist with lip swelling. It is a persistent lip swelling. It lasts for two years. The patient starts also at one point to have abdominal pain, to have some blood in the stool, and it is referred to a gastrointestinal unit. It is taken a biopsy from the colon and the diagnosis of Crohn's disease is set. The dentist takes also a biopsy of the lip, and here it is what we see. This is the lip, this is the epithelium covering the lip, and here is the connective tissue, and deep in the connective tissue, it's an inflammatory infiltrate, which is organized in a quite specific way. There are these granulomas, when we look even closer, we can see these giant cells surrounded by epithelioid cells and lymphocytes. This is a typical granuloma. So this persistent lip swelling has been a manifestation of Crohn's disease two years even before the intestinal manifestation occurred. If there is only one thing I would like you to remember from this discussion would be that kids with persistent lip swelling can have Crohn's disease. So think of that when you see a kid with persistent lip swelling. A different patient with a completely different clinical picture. It is a 15 years old patient and has multiple ulcerations. The ulcerations are quite unspecific. They look like ofte. A dentist normally will not take biopsy from lesions that look like ofte, but in this case they were persistent and they were accompanied by fever and fatigue. This is what came to us in the pathology. It is quite a specific inflammatory reaction under the epithelium, but deep we can see again the accumulation of the chronic inflammatory cells as a granuloma. 
The patient was also sent to the gastrointestinal unit. Here are some images from colonoscopy. You can see hemorrhages and ulcerations, pretty similar to what the patient had in the mouth. Histologically, here we can see mucosa from ventricle and from colon, and we could see again the accumulation of these structures containing chronic inflammatory cells called granulomas. Again, remember, these unspecific lesions can be a sign, an early sign of Crohn's disease. If these lesions persist for a while, the accumulation of these granulomas in the submucosa will induce the bulging of the mucosa. They can look more prominent or less prominent, and we call them cobblestone lesions because they remind to us of the streets which are paved with cobblestones. Histologically, we see here a mucosa covered by epithelium, and we see inflammatory infiltrate that is organized again in this quite specific structures. They contain Langhans giant cells, they contain epithelioid cells, and they contain scattered lymphocytes. Please remember, they can lie quite deep in a tissue. Sometimes we don't see any granuloma superficial, we see them just deep in the muscle. So remember when we take a biopsy from a patient with a suspicion of Crohn's disease, please take it deep so we are able to find these pathognomonic lesions. More pictures of cobblestone lesions, these are more prominent and can cause dysfunction to the patients. They can be so prominent that can even form false or fake folds, like in this case. The histology again, pretty similar. We can see the accumulation of giant cells, epithelial cells, and lymphocytes. To summarize, early manifestations in Crohn disease can appear as lip swelling with vertical fissures is one of the most encountered oral symptoms of Crohn's disease. Can be as oral erythema or as oral ulcers. All this can be very early, can be even the only manifestation of Crohn's disease. Later on, when the disease has progressed for a while, the accumulation of granulomas in the submucosa give the appearance of the mucosa as a cobblestone, as mucosal tags, and can be even look like this lesion, a linear ulceration with hyperplasia around that can even be suspicious for malignancy. I didn't present any case to you, but patients with Crohn disease can also present inflammation of the salivary glands and can affect the function of the salivary glands, so the patients will present with dry mouth. The histology is very typical. It's similar in the oral lesions with the colon, the intestinal lesions, Pathognomonic is the presence of the accumulation of giant lung cells, but in 30%, maybe they are not. They are epithelial cells and lymphocytes. Remember, they can lie deep in a tissue, so take a deep biopsy when you have a suspicion of Crohn's disease. I would like to stop here, but mentioning once more that a persistent lip swelling with fever can ring a bell that this could be something severe, as severe as Crohn's disease. Thank you for your attention.